All right, so our plan is to get that engine on that cart. This engine has a built-in transmission torque converter clutch. Inside here, it's uh, oil filled, drives a cog belt. We have to take this apart to get it off of that engine anyway. I wanna to try to see if we can use this in this drive. May or may not, don't know until we get in there. So let's get you set up in a stand. We'll start taking it apart. Hey guys, and how's it going? We're gonna uh, continue on with this uh, go-kart from a amusement park setup. We are trying to do an upgrade on the engine. When we first got it, it wasn't running, got the original uh, Honda five horse going, five and a half horse. Ran it around, uh, it was fun, but we want to have more fun. So uh, we are trying to set up with uh, go big or go home. And that being this Briggs 16 horse V-twin. The problem with it in uh, this engine is that it has a tapered shaft on it. We tried using, that's where you just saw that wet transmission that was over there, that wet clutch, is that we uh, couldn't use any of that. It was not gonna be able to fit. I was hoping to find some one and a quarter inch items that would fit this engine because we still have the pulley from the generator part. And I figured this is a one and a quarter inch shaft. We could have used this to go drive uh, continuing down the system. That is not the case. Most of the stuff that is available kind of maxes out at one inch. And so I grabbed a one inch clutch that is good to 13 horse. So it is eventually going to smoke itself, but I figured we could have some fun trying to do that. We need to make that that fit on that. So why don't we take this and bring over to the lathe. Possibly this is one and a quarter. That's one inch. Let's see if we can whittle this thing down to make that fit on there and we'll make it the sacrificial lamb. Worst case we could, you know, fire it up and grind down the crank and try to make it fit on there. But I'd like to try to do this first. All right, so that hub, it goes down to like a sheet metal thickness in there, pretty thin. I was debating whether to cut this right off or should we cut it back to here and leave like a, a portion going around for support. I think we're just going to get right, right rid of it. Because <laughs> also, these are like a pressure fit. When it goes onto the crank, you run them down, but there's no key in it. So if we get this correct, I wouldn't mind just taking a tack weld and we'll put a tack or two around it just so it locks it so it doesn't want to spin on the shaft. We'll cut that right off and then we still have to modify this pulley to fit over that too. So we've got to open that pulley up. It looks like there's plenty of meat there. Actually, if we cut those grinds off, it might even... What if we change that hub? That's getting ahead of ourselves. Well, the other thing too is the clutch setup that was on there was a two to one and the pulley is roughly about this size that's on the axle so this is about the, the diameter of the drive that it's going to be and we are losing a two to one ratio so if the thing popped out at 20 miles before it's going to top out at 40 miles an hour now but the problem is when you're getting out of the hole it's going to want to really try smoking the clutch so we'll see <laughs>
pay me novice. Just so you know. We are. Should be almost right on it. I think we take one more pass without even moving the tooling. I think we're right there. I think we should be right on it. Maybe a little polish of. Mm. We'll uh, knock those welds down a little bit and run a piece of emery across it. Around the money. Also, I think as it cools down, too, it might get a little on the smaller side. There's a joke there somewhere, too. Go, but I think I may want to go take a, a little bit more off of it. We're on it. We're just spin it and see what we get. See how bad it wobbles. <laughs> it's only on there an eighth of an inch though. You tell it's raining out. There we go. Now let's see if we've got that pretty good. Go spin it and see how it looks. Concern right there with gear is how how true that is. All right, now we gotta do something for about a key. I'm leery about that because of how much thickness we have to go. Precision fit. So this is a three-in-one, they call it a three-in-one. Let me back you up a little. I've never used, I have a Bridgeport at home. It's not here, unfortunately. But let's see if I even have, I don't even know if I have a collars for that. Oh, that sucks. I don't think I have a collar. They're at home. All right, so we have I'm trying to feel the difference of the 
amount of material. What I'm afraid of, we're going to break through if I go to put a, cut a key in there. That. Too bad we just couldn't put that right on there. So that's a clutch. I think we're probably going to run it maybe this direction. So we're getting, so we don't get so far away from the crank. You know, the more you pull on the crank. So we need to get that onto there. Let's pull the snap ring off. We'll pull the sprocket off. And we'll see what we have to work with. With probably opening this up, I would think. Launch that across the room. Come on. Brush washer. Oh man, I was hoping that. Oh, that's gonna suck. I was not expecting that for some reason. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that puts a little bit of a dilemma on it. I wonder if I can find a chain pulley. Yeah, a gear for the bottom, chain-wise. We'll go with chain, I guess. All right, so that's everything just kind of tapped into place. That's got a thin shoulder. This one has a large shoulder. Uh, I think I'm probably going to do a tack right across there. Maybe two. Not worry about the key for now. And we can do the same with here. And we still have the bolt with a washer that we could run down on the face of it to suck everything together. And right, this should be, it's cleaned up now. I got the rust off of it. This really should be a press fit where it kind of bites into itself. Kind of like a, a collet does on a on a milling machine or a lathe same idea this it's just kind of a a press fit but well, we'll throw a couple tacks on it that'll hold it all together ideally the sprocket should be about right here as far as the load on the end of the crank but we're gonna go wing it with what we got i need to go find a, a sprocket to modify to fit on the base of this and again that's we could also switch back to the stock engine stack stock whole assembly if we want. Ideally, what I wanted to do was put a motorcycle engine on this and make it more like a shifter cart or an ATV engine that had reverse and still make it a shifter cart, hoping for something with an electric start. I got a bike from Dizzy, and uh, unfortunately the bike is so nice, you haven't seen it yet. The bike is so nice that it, I didn't want to tear it apart. Oh, that's for a later video. So I'm still in the search for that, but again, we're gonna just keep moving forward with this engine. We're gonna see how things go together and. Just wing it. See what happens. Have some fun. Live a little. So now that I'm changing over the chain drive, I went home and my stash tried looking to see what I have. Unfortunately, I do not have as much as I thought I did. Most of the stuff is uh, belt pulleys. But I do have some chain stock. And I went and I stopped at Tractor Supply, for those who don't know. Tractor Supply is a company that sells parts for tractors but does not sell tractors. <laughs> and I found this. It's a 48 tooth sprocket and then it's got a quarter inch hub adapter that you weld onto that. So that is the size of the axle, this quarter inch. That will fit in place of here. But I have one last stash I'm going to look upstairs real quick and make sure. The, the problem with this is it's going to be geared too tall. I need something that's closer to almost the size of the tire about this far out. Uh, the gear ratio between the two, it's just going to end up smoking the clutch. I know it. We're going to move forward with it anyway. Uh, also, at some point, I want to switch over to motorcycle engine, make it a shifter cart. And this might be the ticket for that because you have much slower gearing when you have a transmission to run through gears. So, may not all be a loss. Let's go look upstairs real quick see what we can find. So, this Trail 70 is a parts bike for some other ones that we have already put together and we'll be putting together. That is not looking like, that's probably about the same size, I'd say. Yeah, it's not gonna help us. Hey, I don't wanna rob any parts from that bike. I wanna leave together. This is another parts, but that's even smaller. So 
Oh, the parts one too. That might be our prize though. What's that got on it for? <clears throat> hmm. I wonder if that opening will even match the hub that I bought. I don't know if that wheel will come off of there. Yeah, it looks like it's already. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let's go bring that down. Uh, wait, we gotta make sure it's. Tire's still tall. That might work out. We may have saved the day. Surprise! Okay, chances are. Actually, it's not bad. It's close. Too bad it wasn't just a hair smaller because it opened up with the lathe. What about that side? But if we were to open it up and weld it to, to that, if we, getting it flat's going to be a bitch, though, huh? Getting it perfectly straight. Yeah. Let's go see what size. Okay, I kind of take this part anyway. See if we can get this hub off, break this down, and see if possibly we can use that sprocket with whatever is up inside here. All right, let's get it. Look how chances are. Got the set screws out. Try it by hand. If it doesn't work, we'll go with the impact. There it goes. Damn it. Say it's gonna go easy. It's going. I don't have a. Generally, you put a collar on the end of the puller, right in here. I don't. I don't have one. in there that saved it until the next one does That was easy. A little pressure down in between there. Open that up a little. Be able to get that off. Now 
Yeah, well, you think our chances are that 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 is much bigger <laughs> than that. Can we bolt that? I guess it all depends if we can get it lined up right in the center, right? If we can line, get that lined up center, is that going to interfere with the bolts though? Because this still needs to go. So this, the way this locks down, I got a crack in it. That's not good. The way this locks down is it wedges itself tight on that. That's why I was trying to use the other screws to jack jack off <laughs> the pulley. Oh well. I don't know. I think ease of simplicity. Yeah, what we go with that and we modify this rocket to fit that hub I think it would probably be our best bet just got to figure out the best way to center that you know I if that's bent is it bent to you hmm we'll start poking through my stash of different size collars and all I was trying to make, figure maybe we can make something that's like a spacer. How we could use to center the gap of that up. I found this, but it's still kind of wobbly. And we could take it down the lathe to go fit inside. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to help us, or should we just. Maybe just eyeball it. The other thing too, it doesn't sit. It's kind of like on the cusp, so it's not like it's it's going to be parallel. Maybe what we'll do is we'll try. We'll try centering it. Right. We'll put a tack on it and a tack on it, and we'll let it be. We'll put it in the lathe. It's going to fit in the lathe. Hopefully, it'll fit in the lathe, and we could spin it. And if it's off a little, we can kind of maybe bing it with a hammer, get it as straight as possible. We can also watch for any of that. Do a little fine tuning and then we get a fine tune, we'll weld in the rest of it. And if not, we'll grind it off and try again. I got one tack in it. Unfortunately, I kind of pulled it off the center a little, but let's go see. Yeah, she's a tad wobbly, huh? So now can we tap that? I can put it in neutral and just spin it by hand, maybe. So that has to go. Yeah, see, up. I gotta cut it free. I'll show you why. Do it again. Yeah, it's really jumping up and down. I gotta recenter that. Let's go watch it. Put that up next to it. You can use that for a depth gauge. So that needs to come out. We want right there. Let's see where the high spot is. The high spot is right there. popped it off the yeah I moved it out of the hub you gotta reset should 
probably come up, maybe come in with a cone from the other side to support it. Let's see what we got. Actually, it doesn't look terrible. Let's go spin it. She's too, too off center though. That's gotta go that way. about 180 up in the weld yeah that's what happened the wet the weld drew it in we gotta go cut that loose again and maybe favor favor one side a little and compensate for how much the weld pulls it Almost there. Of course I missed the money shot. All right, so my plan is, this still has some play in it back and forth, but it's tight on here. So the plan is to cut it, see if we can slip it down over it, it'll open up a little bit, and that should fill the gap in by guesstimation. Let's see how well I guesstimated. Let's see. Might wanna I need to clean that burr off there a little bit. Let's call it like that first. And yeah. Stay. There it goes. Again, I just gotta ream that. A little hair going off around it. Where is? Flash the camera. You need one. There you go. <laughs> One way or another, is going to fit. It just does not know it yet. And who's your daddy? Now we just gotta make it so it doesn't wobble. All right, I got two tacks on it. I expect it to wobble. But it looks good this way, and that's what we're concerned about. So let's see if we can get some of, actually just take a Sharpie. where we're touching, which is right there. It's better. It'll be easier with my hits, I think. Where is it? transfer it enough. My tip is dry. Hit me your tip is dry. Yeah, it's still right here. Let's 
it's starting to look pretty good. Let's make sure that I'm going to reset that coupler. Let's make sure we didn't knock the hub, you know. Turn that in. Wrong way. Tighten that up. So you get the idea. I'm gonna go doing that back and forth so I see you get that as true as I can. And after a couple of beatings. So I'm gonna gingerly take that out of there, go over and put one more tack on. Once I got three tacks on it, it'll stay wherever we put it. Hopefully it's just not that. I'm gonna eyeball the hub, make sure I didn't whack it. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna go with. And uh, call it for a win. Let's see what we got from the side. Look at the outer edge of the teeth. See, that looks pretty good. I'd say we probably want... Yes, I'm lubing my shaft. The hub... Let's think about which way, want, which way do we want to go? Where do you want? How do you? Which way do you go? Do we want that or that? That will put it. I think we're gonna want it like this, as long as we clear the tire, because this sticks out so far anyway. Let's grab the wheel assembly, put that, let's get all this crap out of the way, and we'll put that wheel assembly on. We'll see how much distance we have between there, and then we'll start looking at where to uh, put the engine. Let's yeah, so see, drive that axle on here. The hub, the hub bub. I did clean the inside of that up too. I guess we'd rather have a, a snug fit. The nut holds it. <laughs> I'm the nut holding it. Let's see if we can. Grab a tire. Watch the sprocket be like bigger than the tire. <laughs> that. I said we probably go over. Well, it's kind of loose. Let's make uh, some room for the engine. We take some, cut some stuff off. We get rid of that stanchion. Has to go. We're not that far from it, huh? Actually, right there. We were just to straighten that engine out. Yeah. I got a bracket I gotta get rid of. That'll allow me to lift it up. Let's get this thing off of here. Put the original plate, the adjustable plate, thread this in and out for our tension. I don't know if it's going to fit the bottom of that engine. Plus, I want to see how much we clear the clutch by. If we use it, or if we just make something out of route. That might work out pretty good. We can actually move that sprocket over a little, a little too. Freehand. I don't think it will be that bad, huh? Throw that tire on there. 
place we have to worry about hitting, right? Yeah, we're right on it. Right on it. So we need to either be probably back a little more. Could shim the whole thing up too. I think if I spin this around, but then the part that's pulling is even going to be further away from. I think our best bet maybe just leaving that alone. Probably leave this where it is. I think this pull start was meant. I thought it had a, a little tether, we can make one, a little tether that stops it uh, from going all the way under the, the thing we're trying to fire it up. The body, we should go look what that is. That might be the top of the thing. But we, if we get rid of the air cleaner, and can we get rid of that? Might have enough. Did that do anything? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Uh, I'm gonna go stare at it a little bit more. I'm gonna go get a tape measure. And I'll see where that body kind of comes from the mount. I'll look at it, where the distance is. I think the rest of it might be okay. I think it goes fairly far. Catch that one there and the one on the other side. Worst case, I have no problem cutting a hole in it as long as we don't really trash it, but rather you don't have to all right so that mount is roughly let's call that four and a half to the center this one's got a mile call that one 13 to the center so from that hole Puts it right there. The other ones we're going to have an issue though. Were we saying it, it was four and a half, five and a half? That's going to put it right in here. You actually see it's got some wear marks from the, the old engine was chattering on it. We got a hole up top. We might be able to put an air cleaner right through that. I say we have to go over. All well, depends. Height wise, it's probably right there, right? So if we can get it six. If we can get it six on center, we'll clear everything. Don't worry. That's it. No, the exhaust, that's where we were. And that is above, how high above that is it? Top of the mount's gonna be there. Say five inches up. So five inches up is where it's going to intersect, right? It's right here. So kind of 50-50. Say if we come over five, we should just make it. I kicked it over a little. The other thing too is, is we're talking exhaust. So there's going to be a heat issue around that. I do see us changing the exhaust. Yeah, we're at five and a half right now. So it should put the body on an angle. I'm gonna guess right about there. We can run exhaust down and out. I wonder, I wonder if we can cut it, flip it around, have it come down. Then run a pipe or something out. Hmm. And so here's the plan. I'm gonna pop the engine off there. I already got the air cleaner out of the way. And we got plenty of room. I'm gonna go cut a couple of hunks of these out and bolt two runners to the bottom of the engine. And that, I should be able to get the nuts from, you know, if I cut it close enough. Probably even weld them in too, matter of fact. And then I'll clean the paint off this plate. We'll come around, we'll move the engine exactly to where we want it, put a chain on it, 
and then I'll come in with the, the welder and I'll just tack these bars onto that bottom plate. So that'll give the adjustment still. Sound like a plan? We got cutting wheels in case it doesn't work. We just hit the undo button. That's the plate all cleaned up. And there's the base. All prepped. GM nuts on it, so I don't have to worry about them backing off. And then you have to worry about locking hardware too. Took the starter off, the starter's beat anyhow. So I'll go home and I'll check my stash. It's locked up and it, it burned the poster right out of it. I'll check my stash, see what I can find. If not, maybe uh, shop around. I'd really like to have an electric starter on this thing. This is the uh, output of it too. 12 volt DC coming out, charge a battery. And this one I'm not sure yet. It is either going to be going to the oil pressure switch and if it has low oil pressure, it shuts off or it's a kill wire or possibly both. I think it's probably gonna go right to the coil and just ground out the coil. And I gave it just a couple more beatings. Now it sounds like a finely tuned instrument. <laughs> and one last look before we weld it. I like it, change the little light. Maybe breaking those, we're gonna find out. <laughs> Clearance seems to fit pretty good all the way around. The fiberglass from the body has to kind of slide in behind the seat, so I kicked the motor even further back. Uh, we're gonna swap valve covers. Because the fill is right here, so we can just pop that valve cover off, swap that around to the other side, and turn my light off. And the dipstick, I don't know. I wonder if we can cut like the tab off. Maybe we can rotate it so it kind of curves up this way. I'll say why not. We can get it out of there, but when the body's on there, it's gonna be, maybe we drill a hole <laughs> through here. We can get it out, but not great, you know. All this stuff is, you can get rid of. Probably get rid of this, probably go to a different air cleaner, so that was the bracket for the air cleaner. And the exhaust we talked about, we could flip it down here, we'll run it down below. That'll clean up a bunch of the crap on top. So I think we are good to go. I wish I could have had this saddle back a little further, but I got about three quarters of an inch adjustment. I got a chain on it with all the links in it and fairly taut. So we still have some adjustment to kind of go move back. I think we're good. Bolts in it. Everything sucked together up here. Still needs to be welded. We put the set screws in it, that won't hurt. But we gotta tack it, tack it. This is the press fit here. And normally you would have a key in here with the set screw going down, locking into it. But again, we're gonna weld these two together. I can. And I got it all buttoned up. It's pretty good. You want to give her a couple of tugs? I don't see anything waddling out here. No waddling for you. Pull start cover needs some screws. And we got to figure out a way to have it not run at full throttle because it was set up on a governor. So that throttle is wide open right now. And we gotta figure out how to make it. So it's not so wide open. And we want we want that. We want the opposite. I take that big spring off, that's what we'll do. Because this is idle. That's full throttle. All right, no time like the present. Put some fuel in the float ball. I turned up the idle a little bit and the throttle's all been disconnected. Choke, who knows? I think we just give her some choke. I don't even know if there's a kill switch on. Let's go find out. We'll start rubs.
Say, we check for spark. <laughs> the uh, pull start. Oh, the pull start somewhere is rubbing the tins. I mean the electric start, yeah. Let's give her. Get a rip. Nice. <laughs> I don't have a shut off. All right. Looks like it's going to do pretty good. There you go, air out. All right, that works out pretty good. Nothing blew apart yet. <laughs> Hope it all got cobbled together. Seems like it's doing decent. I expect it's going to have a failure point. I got uh, a couple of, you know, issues are kind of weak on it. Uh, size of the chain, kind of light. How far out this is, kind of levering off the engine. I think that's probably where it's going to fail, is that when it, under full throttle, it's going to pull down on it and put slack in the chain to make a jump or pop off. But we could probably grab up off the frame here and grab the cylinder head and counter that. We'll see how it does first. It's sitting there nice though. I just eyeballing the the body, seeing if I had any issues because because the top of the shell is going to be right here. Nothing saying we can just can't shim the body up just a little bit too. I think we'll be fine. That hole that's in the cover, we could add to it. We can make the air cleaner. I think that's going to be right about, yeah, that hole is right about here. So also we got to flip, we need to work on the throttle, put the body on and what else? Brakes are all still hooked up. Still one wheel peel, but that'll be fine. 
and we just want to test it see how it is see what i got for a starter at home i may have a starter for it if not i'll i'll do the uh, ebay shopping again i, I want to have it so it has electric so i want to hop on it and just turn a key and go <laughs> It's coming out really good. So this is it for now though. Just out of time. Getting late. I think this is gonna be a fun toy. It's a slight upgrade. <laughs> See if we can uh can we eyeball it. See if we can uh, line up and put the body back on by you know, where's the wheels? <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. I'm mumbling. I'm going to go shut it down. Thank you all for kind of hanging out with me and uh, having some fun wrenching on oddball things. Until the next one. See ya. That's better. You just had to squeeze around the front rail there a little and just popped right down. Almost looks factory. Tucked in there nice. So far, I don't see anything that we're going to have to go cut fiberglass. This is the closest places where I thought we were about an inch, an inch away from the exhaust. Might be able to wrap that one section of it there. But again, like I said, all this area is open. We can modify the exhaust and have it come down and out this way or, you know, whatever. I don't see anything that's going to harm or cause an issue. You? Speak up now.